Hello there, my name is Manik and with me we have Mr. Nikhil Chavla, a renowned tech expert and two really special devices, the Xiaomi Pad and the OnePlus Pad. Actually the Xiaomi Pad 6 and the OnePlus Pad, both these devices just recently launched but they are leaving an impression on the market. And uh, before we dive into these devices, let's ask Mr. Nikhil, what do you think about the Indian tab market and how this entire scene is evolving? I think globally we've seen that iPad has been the strongest player since its launch. You know, when the first iPad came out, everybody was like, you know, what is the use of a tablet? You know, it was just a bigger screen and almost replicating the same apps you would see on an iPhone and everybody was like kind of dissing it. But then we realized the potential over the time and now we see it has almost 50% of the market globally and in the western countries we've seen Apple products are dominantly taking care of the category alone. But in India it's a different story, we're a very price sensitive market and so it's a very different market here in terms of tablet. We see players like Lenovo, Samsung, Nokia and Xiaomi and of course OnePlus taking in charge with the tablet market. But this is a different segment, this is not like your starting segment of tablets and we both have used it over a few weeks now and exchanged these tablets to give you our experiences of these tablets and how it comes along in this market. So these are like I would say flagship killers of the tablet market right now. Right now it seems so because almost every smartphone maker has dumped a couple of tablets into the market but we don't think something quite so powerful has been there in a while. Absolutely. And both these uh, tablets, the spec sheet alone makes you want to buy these, okay? If you talk about the Xiaomi first, I'll say it's an 11 inch screen. It's a 2.8K display. I mean, gets Dolby Atmos, gets Dolby Vision, uh, good keyboard, decent speakers, I mean, more than decent speakers. And the stylus is there. And all of this, all of this package is there in the sleek chassis under 30,000 rupees. I mean, the keyboard and the pencil are extra, right? So, but you get the main tablet for under 30,000 rupees, which is, I believe, a big deal in this segment. Of course. And I also think that, you know, going the whole package way is the way forward. You know, they learned it from the iPad Pros of the world that you need a keyboard, you need a pen or a stylus, whatever you want to call, call it. Like, Xiaomi calls it Smart Pen 2, OnePlus called it Stylo. But it's all kind of inspired from the Apple Pencil. And we see that they are now trying to create a segment where it's the tablets are not just for consuming content but also for creating content because over the years we've all seen our tablets are just lying around they're sitting doing nothing unless and until we're watching some content on it or gaming but now the things have changed now it's like really for content creators on the go this is like a tablet where you can scribble you can edit photos edit videos so so many use case scenarios and it is also powered by these processors which is, you know, the Dimnesty 9000. Before we get to that, yeah. before we get to the speaker part, I hate to cut you here, but what do you think is the screen size on both these? I think they're both 11 inches, right? right. You are right. Okay, but this <laughs> is an 11. Absolutely. This is an 11.6. Six, yeah. But if we just look at the visible difference in Correct. the chassis size, it's yeah. just because of OnePlus is doing something here. Yeah. This is the world's first 7 is to 5. Yeah, 7 is to 5. Square. 7 is to 5. It's completely yeah. squared, so it's designed more for reading and consuming content. Absolutely. Actually. But uh, you've been watching videos on this, right? Correct. So, how's the video being experienced? I think it's a good thing because usually our movies in cinematic world is all widescreen, so it kind of fills that thing where you don't see a lot of gaps up in there, up and down. So that is the kind of experience they wanted to create and also OnePlus has always been the company that wants to do things differently. And they almost kind of replicate Apple in terms of quality, packaging and all those design elements. And you can see right here, it's like a replica of an iPad Pro right here. You see the pencil, you see the keyboard stand, this keyboard folio case and everything and even the color. This color is such a standout color. So they play on these strengths of the brand they have. And then the ecosystem, we'll talk about that. Yes, the ecosystem part, like that's one of the things that were reserved for Apple users for such a long time that yeah. uh, we were willing for an Android ecosystem. Then Android and Windows came along and they said that we are going to do this collaboration. You can have your Android apps on Windows via Amazon, I believe. Yeah, that was it. But uh, Xiaomi here has created a Xiaomi ecosystem. So your entire phone, your entire phone clones onto the display. You can drop the images and the notifications, everything, anything you want to see. Continuity and airdrop views. <laughs> it's going to be right here on this screen whenever you want. Your phone is just laying next to it. But uh, I think OnePlus took it one step further. Yeah, they did. And also last, not even last, you know, just a few hours ago, they rolled out an update where it allows you to use your mobile phone for data. So you don't need to have a separate SIM in your tablet. Now that's great, but you'll be saying that can be done through a hotspot. Well, not even a hotspot is needed in that because what it does, it's actually replicating your data and also giving you a lot of other features along with that. So that continuity and airdrop features are also included in this tablet now. 
I believe that has the better keyboard. Just a second. It has because it has a trackpad. So let me let me show this to you. What is happening here is this keyboard right here, the Xiaomi Pad. It has a good keyboard, decent key travel and everything. But since it is a compact keyboard, they had to mess out on the you know the trackpad. So whenever you're using the keyboard, like I use it, I was very intensely packed into writing something, and then once I see I have to go up and correct something, I'm looking for a trackpad, and I find myself rubbing my hand on the table. Yeah, and uh, that didn't happen when I switched to the one. Of floor. course, so of course, because then you are not things. like moving up and down. And I think one company can fix that if they don't give a trackpad, they can give a track point. That is Lenovo because they have that ability and that technology. You are a fan of the track point. Right? Of course, of course, because you know when you're on the keyboard, you don't want to move your hands up and down. And yeah. exactly that's what track point does to your life, and your productivity goes, your efficiency goes up. Now let's talk about the specs. You know, we always are a spec hungry country. We always want the best in the minimum amount. So. Let's compare the specs one by one. So processing power. Before we talk about the specs, and you see the specs, you have to know the price of both these tablets. So I think we'll reserve that for the last part. That's the surprise element. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Let's guess the price there. Yeah. Okay. So no prices, just the specs. So the Xiaomi Pad. Uh, this gets a uh, Snapdragon 870, has a 2.8K display, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, and 8GB uh, 8, 8 of RAM in the top variant yeah. with 256GB storage. Quad speakers, Quad fast speakers, charging. Yes, the fast charging is really good and the battery lasts about two days. Okay, I have put it through tests and it lasted more than two days on my test, but uh, if you use it in mixed moderate, use it with the stylus and the keyboard, two days is a great battery life for this. 100% in 100 minutes. 100%, 100, 110 minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, about the OnePlus, yeah. that thing also gets a Dimensity 9000 chip. Now, this one, I believe, is a more powerful chip because this is somewhat at par with the Snapdragon 8 Gen, Gen 1, right? So, this is a slightly more powerful chip and it gets more RAM too. It gets uh, 8 gigabytes for the base and 12, uh, 12 gigabytes for the top variant and again 256 gigs of uh, storage. Yeah. This is all fast and this is all good enough, but there is one point where Xiaomi nailed the spec and OnePlus didn't. That's the USB-C connector. The one you see on Xiaomi is a 3.2. 3.2 USB. 3.2 USB 3.2. So the data speeds are much, much, much faster. faster. And the one you see on uh, the OnePlus pad is a USB 2. Yeah. So I believe it's going to take you, what, about three, four years back? Yeah, absolutely. Data yeah. Speeds? I mean, not the point you wanted to do cost cutting but they have done it just to save some money on the product but not the product you not the element you should have done cost cutting on because that makes slower data charging for but sure. i mean fast charging works better on that one so yeah they they have compensated for that in the charging part correct yeah right let's talk about the displays on both these devices i mean uh, it's one of the things i mean I this think is primarily people will be gaming a lot on the, it it's the window that makes you look into the you know entire os and everything Correct. all your experience is coming through the display yeah. and both these tablets have good displays in their own regard yeah okay and let's not forget there is a big difference in the price not that big but still a significant gap yeah okay we'll keep that for the end though <laughs> So, the display on the Xiaomi here, it's a 2.8K display, 11 inches. Yeah. It is a high refresh rate screen, 144 Hz, and you have some more control on it. I mean, you can select between 60, 90, and 144. So, 90 Hz is a sweet spot where you don't burn too much battery, yeah. and you get a good, you know, decent refresh rate for your eyes. But coming to the OnePlus, there are just two options. You can either select standard or you can select a high refresh rate. Yeah. And the high refresh is a dynamic refresh. It doesn't, you know, properly stay at 144 or not. It just keeps switching. So I believe if that had more granular control, that would be better. And Xiaomi gets 15 nits more of peak brightness. But uh, I think I think it's almost the same. 500, 500, 550 nits. Yeah. yeah. I think outdoor, a lot of people don't use tablets outdoor anyway. Yeah. But still, it's good to have more nits. So that's about it, I guess, yeah. I think all of it can, can kind of consolidates about user experience. None of the specs matter, none of it matters. Everything comes down to how is the experience using it. And I think Manik has an interesting story to tell you all. I do. Okay, so uh, this goes back a couple of days. I was sitting with a bunch of friends and uh, I just opened up the tablet to do some writing work. And uh, they just looked at it for a minute and then everyone got back to their own business because they knew I was using an M1 iPad Air a couple of months ago. So they assumed this is an iPad. After 15-20 minutes, we decided to play some music and I blasted the speakers and they asked, the speakers have really gone good on the iPad. Like, this is not an iPad. And I mean, they were shocked to hear the price of this thing and then to use this thing and even, you know, uh, the Xiaomi pen right here 
compliments for making this because I have uh, given this to three iPad users who have used the first and second generation pencil and both are saying this is fairly comparable to the second gen which is a good thing it's a really good thing so I think this everything price. that you're talking about as I said it boils down to the experience and the pricing of course and right. talking about experience there's one thing that I think Xiaomi lacks is giving you an upper hand about the updates how soon you'll get the update how many years did you get would you get the update on the other hand OnePlus is pushing a lot of OTA updates like I said few hours ago we got, a, got an OTA update which kind of enhances the features and like you mentioned refresh rate I think it's just a few weeks that uh, OnePlus might push that update also yeah. we can gradually control should. that they should so yeah. overall I think both of these tablets are great in its own way because the pricing will be the deciding factor and also your brand loyalty OnePlus has a lot of loyalists a yeah. lot of cult following so it all boils down to the pricing now I'm gonna give you the pricing of the Xiaomi pad because that is shocking well the MRP is 39,999 rupees but you can get it for 27,000 rupees that's crazy for that spec and that kind of tablet with that kind of hardware now you should break down the pricing for the oneplus pad so the oneplus pad is uh, going to cost you about 37,000 rupees and 39,999 for the top variant and uh, when you look at the spec sheet of this device the oneplus compared to the xiaomi you will see why the price pump is there and i think it is kind of justified as well but both these devices end of the day are tapping into the same consumer segment i believe there's a 10000 rupee difference but that premium is something that i believe you can talk better about i mean what should the people go for and who should go for this and who should go for that i think it's almost the same screen sizes they might look very different sizes if you look at like with your vision it looks very different but it's almost the same display sizes but overall i think it's again if you can save 10000 rupees why not because you're getting the same kind of performance but xiaomi pad is more for consumption because it lacks trackpad there are some features that you might miss out on and again as i said brand loyalty brand cult following is something that oneplus will always get and this is what i think that a lot of people will still be buying the oneplus pad just to look cool or just to say that i have a premium device in my hand that's about it Okay, so that was our two cents on both these devices. They're great devices, making great impressions right now. And uh, we would like to know your opinion on both these tablets. So make sure you comment on the video and let us know what you think about these devices and which one are you going to buy out of these two. Thank you.